Welcome to Instant Pot School. If you have an Instant Pot and you've been wondering how to use it, or maybe you have one and you love it, or maybe you're wondering, do you need one because you hear everybody talking about it, we're gonna cover all of that. We're gonna start with unboxing one and then we're gonna make a super simple recipe. If you haven't officially joined Instant Pot School, and if you have, you know it because you've gotten the um, free meal plan, which let me show you, that looks like. You're gonna get a free Instant Pot meal plan and grocery list and all of the printable recipes. Um, to get started, you'll get this in your email. You are gonna get lessons with assignments in your email. You're gonna be entered to win an Instant Pot and I'm actually giving away two. So I'm giving one away to the email list, so you definitely wanna be there. I'm also giving one away to people who are on the Facebook Messenger and um, sign up through Instant Pot School through there. So you can do both, um, that would be great. You definitely need to check your email though because that's where um, the majority of the goodies are gonna be found. So um, as you guys come in, um, let me know if you have an Instant Pot and if you've used it yet or not. If you have a friend who you think would be interested in this, just, um, share the video with them, let them know about Instant Pot School. And if you haven't officially signed up yet, you can do that by commenting with the keyword school and then um, respond to the messages that you're gonna get in Facebook Messenger when you do that. If you're already signed up, there's no need um, for you to comment with that keyword. Okay, so I see people are in, um, Laura says she doesn't have one yet. All right, so this is gonna be great. You can decide whether you want one or not. Um, so we'll be talking a lot about it. And she just got signed up. Awesome. Danita loves her Instant Pot. And Sarah McIntyre. Hi, Sarah. She's got a big eight-quart Instant Pot. The one I have is a six-quart. Um, Sarah's got a big family, so she needs a big Instant Pot. All right. So I got this in the mail uh, like last week, I think. I have not opened it yet. So let's get going with this. And we're going to start to finish. So if you've got one in the box... And I know some of you do. If you've got one in the box, give me a like um, or a heart or something on this video and let me know. Because I know that some of you got it and you looked at it and you thought, what in the world? I don't even know. Okay, I'm going to put you this. should go grab yours and open it with you. <laughs> yeah, if you have one in the box, go get it and we'll open it together. Okay, so there it is. But I'm going to put it down on the floor so that I can um, get it out of here. I don't think I'm tall enough to reach in. Okay. There's that. And this one, I saw um, they had a red option, so I thought it just seemed fun to get a red one. This is a lot of unboxing here. Lots of recycling is going to be going on. Okay. All right, there we go. There is our red Instant Pot. I actually really like the way the top of this box looks. With this kind of pie thing. I don't know, I'm a sucker for good marketing, you guys. Okay, so yeah, ask your questions here and I will get to them. I may not get to them all in this lesson one. We're gonna do one lesson a week for four weeks. So um, I think the last lesson is October 20 something, fourth or something, I don't know. Okay, so we have got um, some, I don't know, the user manual here in a bag. I'm just gonna set that aside. Is that what we all do with the user manual? We don't really look at it right now. And some styrofoam and this pretty red lid. Okay, so here's the lid of it. We've got a little tag here. I'm going to slip off or try to slip off. There we go. Okay, so that's that. Oh, yes, Pamela. I've seen those Pioneer Woman ones too, and they're so pretty. They are. How long to cook for a mini frozen pizza? I don't, somebody let me know. If you've used an Instant Pot to cook a frozen pizza, let me know because I, my first thought is that would, you can't do that. 
or your pizza might not turn out the way you want it to. Okay, so this um, lid, the ring was already in here, and all I'm doing is just peeling it out of there so you can see the parts of it. But it was already stuck in there. When you wash it, you're gonna wanna take this ring out so you can get it good and clean. Um, and then, yeah, that's the lid. There's a slow cooker function. Yes, there is a slow cooker function on these instant pots. I don't tip, I don't tend to use that, but um, you totally can. All right, let's see what's in here. A cup for liquid. Now, you probably have a liquid measuring cup, but they give you one, and it's a nice reminder that you do have to have liquid in your pot to get it to come to pressure. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then um, two spoon things, which seem rather useless to me, but maybe somebody can make good use of those. I don't know. Then we've got a rack, like a little steamer rack. This is handy for baked potatoes, eggs, anything you want to keep up out of the liquid. Now this one looks like it's got pretty short feet on it. I think my other one um, has taller feet, which I think I would like better because it would keep things up out of the liquid a little bit. But, all right. Then there is the inner pot, the cooking pot which on an Instant Pot brand pressure cooker is stainless steel. I have a Cuisinart, which is like a nonstick finish. It's also nice. It's easy to wash. This one's not super hard to wash, but a nonstick finish is really easy to wash. Okay, so we've got that. Let me get rid of this package in here. And then we've got the main part of the pot. And I tried to figure out what this part of the pot was like when I was writing the um, lesson one or what it was called. I don't know. Is there a word for it's just this part? I just called it the main part of the pot. I don't know what it's called. Um, it's the part with the control panel. The part that actually heats up. And we've got a warning in here to make sure the heating element is free from grease and debris and don't leave food on the heating element. Right, I don't think we would do that. All right, so there's that. I love this red color. And then we've got all of the buttons here. Um, yeah. So let's just start with um, lesson one. And Beth, you're gonna, I've got Beth over there at the table. And um, if you see questions that we can answer, we can't answer all the questions today because I did, I, last time I tried to do that with Instagram, our an hour. video was like <laughs> over an hour long. So I'm not gonna do that to any of us. But we will get to them um, either in a Facebook group or, yeah. Alicia says call it the cooking vessel. Cooking vessel, <laughs> yes. This is the cooking vessel and this is the inner pot. So it all goes together. This just slides right in there. Your in, the ceiling ring is this. And it just gets put in to um, this rim. You just press it in, super easy to do. Get that back in there. And that's it. That's the whole thing right there in this pretty red color. Um, I would wanna wash this, of course, before I started cooking in it. Okay, so we've got the four main parts. We've got the lid, the ceiling ring, the stainless steel cooking pot, and the cooking vessel, or the main thing, the main cooking part with the control panel. Those are the only four things that you really need to know. It seems like a lot of parts, but it's really not. So if you're gonna cook any recipe under pressure, what you would do is put that ceiling ring in the lid. You're going to put the cooking pot in inside the main thing. Close and seal the lid. So you can kind of hear that if you start it um, over here and then you just twist it, that is sealed. And then make sure that this nozzle here is to the middle so it's at where it says sealed or sealing. If you do it over here to venting, you're either releasing pressure or that's what you would use for slow cooking if you don't want it to come to pressure at all. We're gonna cook under pressure, we're gonna leave it at sealing. And then set the time. 
which leads to the next big question that you may have, which button do I use? So this one has a soup and broth, meat and stew, cake, egg, saute, rice, multigrain, porridge, steam, slow cook. Um, if you're slow cooking, obviously you might wanna use this one, but really, what button do you need to use? I just use manual because the pot can't really tell what kind of food you've got in it. These are just preset times. They don't necessarily mean anything. They'll just give you a preset time. They don't know what kind of food you've got in it, whether you're starting from frozen or very cold, or if maybe um, you've got some room temperature broth, or they have no idea what you've put in there. So it's just kind of a guess anyway. I'm a control freak. I just use the manual button so that I can set the time to what I want it to be. All right, so the other button that I'll use is the saute. If you want to brown meat or cook some onion or something like that before you get started, you might need the saute button. And then um, the other thing I use, but I don't usually have to hit it, is the keep warm button, because um, once the pot is done, cooking at pressure, it will automatically switch to keep warm, and that is really, really handy if you're not quite ready to eat yet. Then it'll just leave your food sitting at a good temperature, and you can leave it there for a couple hours if you need to, and then it's ready to go when you come back. Okay, then we talked about liquid. You're gonna need a cup and a half or a cup, something like that, of liquid. Um, the liquid can be broth, it can be water, depending on your recipe. It could be um, salsa or tomatoes, anything that's kind of liquidy, um, but it doesn't have to be water. Anything that's gonna enhance your recipe. Tomato sauce, that's another one, tomato juice, um, any of those, whatever fits the recipe. Okay, now, let me ask you this question. How many of you guys, when you got your Instant Pot, my son said he did this the other day, they got an Instant Pot for their wedding, he decided to make a meal in it. I think he had one of the slow cooker freezer meals that I did recently. I sent those home with him. So he had one of those meals that he had partially thawed out. He said it took forever in the Instant Pot and he was not a fan. Here's why. Because the word instant is in the name of the Instant Pot and because you've probably read on the internet that you can make like a whole chicken in 30 minutes from frozen, completely done, total start to finish, I'm just gonna tell you that's a lie. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> that is not how it works. You have to allow time for the pot to come to pressure. So if I set the time down here, if I were to click manual and then set um, the time using these plus and minus buttons to um, 20 minutes, depending on how much food I have in here and how cold the food is, is gonna, I'm gonna have to add more time. So the fuller the pot, the colder the food, the more time you have to allow for the pot to reach pressure. So I would still maybe set it for 20 minutes of cook time, but it's gonna take a while before it gets to the point where it can actually start counting down that time. So it's not exactly instant. It may not be faster than cooking your food in a different way. However, it may be more convenient for you, for your day. Um, that's gonna depend on your schedule. If you've got questions about that, let me know. Um, do we have questions, Beth? Well, I love Michelle just said it's nice not to have those expectations. It is. is yeah, because sometimes if you have an expectation of having dinner in two or three minutes, I, and I got to say, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Um, but you're going to be disappointed because it's not going to do that. But it really is a powerful um, tool for getting your dinner done quickly and easily, but not probably in just two minutes. So we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, Wayne asked if you can use it like an air fryer, and someone already said no. Which yeah, I don't think so. Like um, Maybe you could do a mini pizza in an air fryer. Maybe that's why I forget the name uh, of the person yeah. who asked that question. But maybe that's I don't know. I've never used an air fryer. Is it the same thing as a ninja food or ninja foodie? I'm not sure which one that is. So, but I think it is, right? I don't know. On whether, that's a pressure cooker. I don't know if a ninja does pressure cooking or not. I know they do slow cooking and you can um, like saute and, and things like that in there. Um, yeah. So, but I'm not um, sure. 
GT says she loves it for yogurt and cheesecake. Have you done cheesecake? I have not done cheesecake in here. I've done it in a slow cooker before, um, but I've never tried it in the Instant Pot. In that case, you would um, use the rack and put your pan on top, and your liquid be, would be underneath for your cheesecake. So, Because you, you don't want liquid in your cheesecake. That would not work. Um, and then, let's see. Oh. Julie asked, how do you clean the lid? That's a big question. Okay. We get a lot, so. That's a good question. So how I would clean the lid is, um, oh, that ring is tight. I would peel this out and just wash it in a sink full of soapy water. And I would wash this also in a sink full of soapy water. This little piece right here will pop out. It'll pop off. And so if you have, you know, every once in a while you might need, depending on what you're cooking, you may need to pop that off and give it a good cleaning. Um, you know, if you're cooking boiled eggs or something and it's just steam mostly coming off of there, you can probably just leave it on and wash it. But yeah, so that's how you clean the lid. The pot, the same. I think you can put it in the dishwasher, but I usually just hand wash big things like this so it's not taking up so much space in the dishwasher. Um, but that's how you clean it. And then the other thing that you'll need to know when cooking under pressure is your recipe may say do a quick release, quick pressure release, or it may say do a natural pressure release. So what a quick pressure release means that when you're done um, cooking and your lid is still on your pot, you would knock this over to venting and all the steam is going to come out of here. That's a quick pressure release. Now Natural pressure release means you just leave it at sealing and you wait until the pressure drops automatically. And there's a tiny little button, I don't know if you can see this, tiny little button and I'm moving it up and down from underneath. When it's at full pressure it's totally up and then when the pressure drops it'll come down. When it comes down it'll let you open the pot. While it's up you can't open the pot. You never want to force the lid open. Um, that's kind of in there to keep you from blowing yourself up, I guess. Um, which isn't likely. If you don't force your lid open, you're going to be good. Okay. So a couple other questions for okay. time. Yeah. So um, Eric asks, if you have more liquid like a soup, does it take longer to come to pressure? Um, the fuller your pot, then the longer it will take to come to pressure. So if you've got a full pot of soup and you're up to wherever the fill line is on yours, they've got like a maximum amount, then yeah, it's gonna take longer to come to pressure than if you had half a pot of soup. It's so shiny. It's so very it's shiny. So shiny. Know. I know. Uh, and then can, like the, with a crock pot where you can load it up the night before put it in the fridge, can you do that and put it back in or is the condensation like around the outside um, going to be a problem or have you done that? I haven't done that, but I have friends who do. Um, and I guess it's not really a problem to do it that way. Um, yeah, I think that you can do that. Okay. Have you ever done it? I haven't. I, have I just, not. yeah, I think it's because my first job was in a cafeteria, like a line oh, cafeteria, <laughs> and changing the pans was a big thing. Right. And so it just, like, I, have to change the pan and make it. I can't do it. Injury. It's like in there. I'm like, I'm 16. I can't do it. <laughs> so we have other questions like hard boiled eggs. Andy used it to make sweetened condensed milk into caramel sauce. Oh, oh, I've done that in a slow cooker, but I've never tried it in a pressure cooker. But that's delicious. Um, and then one other question about like the would the times be the same between an instant pot and a stove top? You're talking about two totally different things. Yeah, right? between stovetop and instant pot is completely different. If I want to know the times for something that I maybe I don't have a recipe for, but I have a roast or whatever, or I'm creating a recipe, I will um, just search online. Instant pot has a times guide, and I'll use that as a base of what I think will work. Um, yeah. Um, there's questions about liquids. You can pretty much use just, can you use wine? I think so. Um, yeah. Can the lid be immersed in water? That's a yes. good yes. question. I mean, I think I've immersed mine in nothing bad has happened so far, so I'm going to say yes. 
Did I read the manual to find that out? No. I didn't. I'm just going to be honest. Will we read the manual? Maybe. <laughs> probably, probably not. not. <laughs> but yeah, I think so because there's no there's no power or any any cords or wires or anything like that you know, on the sled. So Charlotte, the red thing is the instant pot. And um, she's like, what is the red thing? I just got here. Lisa's question is, what is a good first thing to try? Which okay, is great that question. <laughs> the assignment. It's so like if, we asked you to ask that I know. If you haven't officially signed up for Instant Pot School, you can do that by um, commenting with the keyword school and then follow the prompts um, that you'll get in Facebook Messenger. And then you will get this uh, Instant Pot meal plan and grocery list. You're also going to get a lesson each week, a downloadable lesson. So with an assignment. So our assignment today is to try making rice or mashed cauliflower in your Instant Pot. And I've got both of those recipes here. Now, the reason that I say to start with these things is because if for some reason they don't turn out, they're going to turn out because these are super simple. But if they don't, you don't have your whole meal riding on your rice or your mashed cauliflower you probably can continue on in life, right? <laughs> you haven't it's like, just risked aside. a lot. It's just a side dish, and they're so simple to make. So I'm going to show you how to make the rice um, in just a minute. The mashed cauliflower, you would use frozen cauliflower for florets, um, one and a half cups of water, and then you close and seal that lid and set your timer for seven minutes. Do a quick pressure release when the timer's done. Drain the water off the cauliflower. And then um, add three tablespoons of cream cheese and salt, however much salt and pepper you like to taste. And then when you stir that cauliflower with a spoon, it breaks apart. It should be cooked long enough that it just begins to break all apart and kind of mash on its own. It is delicious. I love that. Well, and the cool thing about the plans as you go through the month is that the recipes will, like, as you have more courage, then you can try the next thing and the yes. next thing. And by the end like, of the month, you you'll may be, be like, hey, I could do this. Yeah, you may be way beyond. I mean, you probably still want to make these things, but, you right. you know, maybe you're not just starting out. That's okay. We've got a lot of other recipes that you can try at That's any point. Enough. So... I am not going to use my brand new Instant Pot to show you how to make this rice because I haven't washed it. I'm going to get my other one. Oh, goodness. All right, here we go. Several people, Tiffany, are asking about a water test um, and first testing the pressure. So can you? Um, I have heard people that? talk about doing that I think it just means that you just put the water in there and seal your pot and just let it make sure that your pot comes to pressure so you can see what that's like and then you risk nothing at all except for water so that's not a bad idea to make sure everything's working right so this um, one has a red ring and the reason is because eventually these rings get stinky like if you cook curry or onions or something that just They'll smell, and you cannot get them clean. I've tried literally everything I know. Denture cleaner, sitting them in the sun, baking soda, vinegar, hot water, cold water, like everything. Nothing eventually will get the smell out, so I just pitch them and order a new set from Amazon. Okay, so that's why my ring is right there. So I've got my pot here. I've got um, one and a quarter cups of water. This is my favorite way to make brown rice. For some reason, brown rice on the stove never turns out for me. I don't know, it shouldn't be hard, but for some reason it is. I've got a cup of brown rice. Let me get a spoon. Just to kind of stir that up a little bit. I've also been making polenta in a pressure cooker, which is amazing. And very easy. Okay, I've got my nozzle set on sealing. I'm going to use the manual button because I just explained how I don't like to um, use any of the other buttons. So I'm not going to use the rice button. Although, let's do, I'm going to cancel that. If I hit rice, it's going to give me 10 minutes. But this is brown rice and I want 17 minutes. So see, I don't trust the pot and that's me. So there we go. That's it. That's all you have to do. I set it for 17 minutes, and then we just wait. 
It'll take it a few minutes to come to pressure. It won't take that long because there's not that much, there's not that much food in there um, and it's not cold. So it's not gonna take very much, very long. But the total time for the whole thing coming to pressure and all is probably around 20 minutes, which is really good for brown rice because on the stove, it's gonna take almost an hour. So there we go. That's done. That's your assignment. Try some rice, try mashed cauliflower, try some other simple thing. We are gonna be back here next week for lesson two. And again, if you're not officially signed up, just comment with the keyword school and then follow the messages we send you in Facebook Messenger. I'm gonna be giving away two Instant Pots later this month, I think on October 29th. But how you get registered for that is by um, registering for Instant Pot School through Facebook Messenger or through the email. I'm gonna pull a winner both from the email list and the Facebook Messenger list. So if you're on both, you get two chances. So that is it. I'm going to see you guys next week. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.